Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, September 29th. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Channel 3 is your vaccine authority. Pfizer took another major step towards getting its coronavirus vaccine approved for kids between the ages of 5 and 11. So they just sent vaccine data to the FDA yesterday for the younger children. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter A. Galil has all the details on when we could expect shots possibly approved. Pfizer has submitted key data to the FDA from trials of its vaccine in kids who are 5 to 11 years old. The drug maker tested a lower dose version of the vaccine on kids below the age of 12 and says their immune response was as strong as teenagers who received a standard dose. Pfizer will ask for emergency use authorization in the coming weeks. This comes as progress is being made to close the racial and ethnic divide over vaccines. A Kaiser Family Foundation survey found 73% of Hispanic adults in the U.S. said they are vaccinated. That's compared to 70% of black adults and 71% of white adults. There were many reasons for this gap, including barriers to vaccine access, and some still had concerns, and those concerns were often rooted in misinformation. In the coming weeks, Pfizer is expected to release data on the immune response of vaccines in children six months to five years old. Aya Galal, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Governor Ned Lamont will be keeping his emergency pandemic powers for about five more months. The state Senate voted yesterday to extend those emergency powers into February, and this extension keeps COVID mandates on vaccines, masks, and testing in place. And this morning, police in Enfield are searching for the man who nearly hit police officers in a parking lot over the weekend. Police tell us they received a report about a theft right by the Enfield Mall. And as you can see through this body and dash cam video that was captured, the suspect tried to speed away. Now we're told, thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. Investigators have also released the details now about the SUV that they're looking for this morning. So take a look at your screen. It's a gray Honda CRV with the Connecticut license plate AW64774. If you have any information, call Enfield Police. Congress is running out of time to avoid a possible government shutdown. The deadline is midnight tomorrow. Republicans again blocked a bill that would have suspended the national debt ceiling. It was the second straight day that this happened. Channel 3's Laura Podesta explains what the president is doing to help lawmakers cross the finish line. President Biden canceled a trip to Chicago today as he tries to shepherd his legislative agenda through Congress. The president is playing his role on getting these pieces across the finish line. Democratic leaders will try to pass two bills this week. One is a trillion dollars for infrastructure and the other $3.5 trillion for social programs like child care and paid family leave. Mr. Biden met with Senators Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin at the White House yesterday, two moderates with concerns over the price tag. The president felt it was constructive, felt they moved the ball forward. But progressives are worried the social programs will be left behind. Washington Congress member Pramila Jayapal tweeted, it's not the infrastructure bill, then maybe the Build Back Better package down the road. We're going to deliver the entire Build Back Better agenda. Reserving the right to object. Meanwhile, Republicans blocked an attempt to raise the debt ceiling for the second straight day. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned of dire consequences if it's not raised by October 18th. And our country would likely face a financial crisis an economic re recession as a result. And a more urgent deadline, 800,000 federal workers will be furloughed on Friday if Congress doesn't pass a measure to fund the government. It's extremely nerve-wracking. The Watersons had to rely on food stamps to get by during the last shutdown. It is frustrating because you think, I mean, what's, what's, what's a more secure job than with the federal government? Democrats are planning to vote on a funding bill today. Laura Podesta, CBS News. All right. Hi, everybody. Good morning. 704. We'll take a look at our Doppler. We did have a couple of scattered showers earlier this morning along the shoreline, like way earlier, like three, four o'clock this morning. They're gone and our Doppler scans the state dry. Let's roll out the bus. You're getting those kids on the bus. You better grab a sweatshirt because it's a little chilly out there. We've got temperatures as low as 43, 44 degrees in parts of northwest Connecticut this morning. And those numbers are only going to get cooler as we work in towards the latter part of the week. 61 and 62. The kids are going to be outside for recess today. The numbers are delightful. Fall like like 65 and 66, a little bit cooler than it's been over the last couple of days. Look at how absolutely gorgeous our old Saybrook Eye Cam is with the Mariner out there on his boat. 
uh, love it. Or her boat, you never know. Uh, as we take a look at Hartford, good morning to you. Absolutely gorgeous this morning. 51 degrees with a wind out of the north at 3. North northwesterly wind at 5 in New Haven. The winds are going to be out of the northwest today. 53 degrees. Now yesterday we were at 72 degrees. Almost a 20 degree difference in temperature in New Haven from yesterday to today. All right, Litchfield, you're up from 44 to 45. Whoopee! 46 in Bristol, 47 in stores, and 50 in West Haven. It is cool. Look at so. <laughs> Look at Salisbury, 43. Come on. Oh. It's, it was, it was it's below average. What's up? 45 in Putnam, 45 in Torrington, 46 in Waterbury, 48 in Danbury, and in Norwich, and then lower 50s. Look at the temperature differential, 16 to 17 degrees cooler, 18 degrees cooler in New Haven. I was just talking about that than just 24 hours ago. Ridiculous, right? All right, so the dew points, I love this weather, though, so bring it on. Uh, the dew points are fairly comfortable. They're in the low 40s, and they'll be in the upper 30s, low 40s during the day today. And we stay fairly pleasant until Sunday, of course, the weekend, when we reintroduce scattered showers into the forecast Sunday afternoon and evening. Wind speeds again 6 to uh, 9 not a big deal but they'll be picking up today sustained 10 to 20 out of the northwest so it'll be a breezy day. It's a nice start with cool temperatures partly sunny skies during the day today and then chilly overnight lows are headed in our direction. Showers to the south of Connecticut not in our state. Good news and according to early warning futurecast tomorrow's weather today we will see a little bit of an increase in cloud coverage by later on this afternoon. This is 5 p.m. So with some daytime heating some clouds form with the cool air aloft and then tonight overnight partly to mostly cloudy there might be a sprinkle tomorrow morning and then uh, a sprinkle by late mid to late morning but then we are back to the partly cloudy skies during the day tomorrow here are your highs for today partly sunny breezy and cool temperatures in the mid to upper 60s delightful you'll notice the shoreline temperatures a little bit warmer than inland and that's because of that northwesterly breeze sun was up at 646 sets at 635 and your overnight lows tonight 45 for a statewide average some towns will be dropping into the low 40s in northwest and northeast connecticut tomorrow 62 partly to mostly cloudy friday 65 degrees saturday 67 degrees look at the overnight low friday night into saturday morning 41 it hasn't been, if it drops below 41, I think it's the coldest day, the coldest morning we've had since May 14th. Yikes. Wow. Sunday, increasing clouds uh, with showers developing Sunday afternoon and evening. Monday, subject to change, we might have to throw some showers in the forecast for Monday. Tuesday, back to normal with a 70 degree high. That's a check of your early morning forecast. I appreciate you watching. I'm meteorologist Scott Haney in the Early Morning Forecast Center at Channel 3. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning into Eyewitness News on your Wednesday. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app as well. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy, stay positive, and stay warm. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.